how can we use conscious breathing to be better parents? What up, folks? My name is Casper at Casper's Focus, aka the Breathwork Biohacker, and I want to talk to you today about breathing and parenting. Now, let me start by confessing that I am not a perfect parent. I have two kids. I love being a dad. It's one of the most amazing things in my life ever, but it's also quite challenging and definitely not always easy, not always fun, but in my experience, always worth it. And since it's so worth it, it's also worth it to start to learn how to relate to our parenting in a different way by having more respect for our own nervous system and what we need in the moment. And it just so happens that breath is a great tool to give us access to this. What I just said, I'll unpack that a little bit. I believe that our own well-being, our own self-regulation is the ultimate tool in parenting. Actually, I believe the other way around that parenting is the ultimate tool for self-development, for self-evolution. If you can start to see your children and the situations in your household as the ultimate mirror to teach you about yourself and about where you get to grow and where you get to learn and where you get to show up differently, then parenting is the best possible school uh, seminar self-help book that you could possibly imagine. And I want to relate that uh, idea to breathing. And another reason why this is so important is because children basically only learn in one way. Uh, or as Stephen Covey says, children learn in three ways. Example, 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 right? So this means that we are role models. And the question is, in every moment that we are aware of our behavior, is what am I actually role modeling right now as a parent? So for example, if you find yourself super frustrated and you kind of just want to scream and kick a door and run away, but you put on a happy voice and you go, no, darling, everything is completely fine. Daddy is not angry with you. Then of course, what example are you giving? You know, ask yourself this. Are you giving an example of staying calm under difficult circumstances? Or are you giving an example of having an in-the-moment state, suppressing it completely for somebody else, going over your own boundary so that you can have an external kind of mask that you think you should have instead of really being in your in-the-present experience? All right, I think it's the latter. So we are so good often as adults at suppressing our in-the-moment experience for somebody else or for harmony or for making somebody else feel good, especially when it's our children. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that we should take every <laughs> intense, aggressive impulse and immediately blurt it out to our children. No, we have the ability to choose consciously what we do with this. And there, in this moment of conscious choice, that is where the breath comes in handy. Or if you feel like you don't have a moment of conscious choice over how you express yourself and behave, then the breath is even better uh, to use in those moments. So, first of all, we need to understand that the breath gives us access to our subconscious, to our nervous system. And our nervous system is, of course, many things, and I won't go into the whole physiology of the nervous system right now, but if you just think about almost like a set of wiring that runs all through your body that determines your in-the-moment state, the state of your body and also, of course, the state of your mind. When you are in a calm state, what they call a parasympathetic state, you're in a calm state, then you are more relatable. Your facial expressions are softer. Your voice has more tonality. You have a higher capacity for holding, for example, uh, a glance uh, and looking somebody in the eye to hold that in a calmer, more pleasant way. So all of these traits are what we're looking for when we're communicating with children. Now, this is also why we often intuitively start to mask or mimic or fake these things where we go like, okay, it's all going to be okay, while you're actually not feeling that way. But children have a very, very high capacity for tuning in with exactly your nervous system, how stressed you are, how much of a fight flight state you are in. And that is what they use to determine whether they are safe or not. So the ultimate tool where breath and parenting come together is what is called self-regulation, auto-regulation. And when you can self-regulate with your breath and you can calm yourself down and actually go through the state that you're trying to get out of and land in a much calmer state, then your child has the opportunity to co-regulate. So since a child is so intimately always completely connected to your nervous system and to the way that you really feel, even if you say something else, 
um, your child also wants to be taken along on the ride of the regulation of your nervous system. So this means that if you downregulate yourself and calm yourself, then a child is invited to do the same. While often when parenting is challenging, we actually do the opposite. A child goes into a heavy emotional state and we go, oh, you think you think you can do a heavy emotional state, right? Let's let's see. Oh, but I can be way more angry or I can be louder. Or I can be bigger. Or I can be right. So we, if they go into an intense emotional state, we tend to kind of overshoot them like, oh, I'll see you anger and I'll raise you with rage, right? Uh, or we start to use threats, or we start to use conditioning, or all of these things that are actually in the long term not helpful. The only real thing that is super helpful is for you to regulate yourself and to invite the child to regulate with you. Now, first of all, this start with narrating your experience, which means that you simply say, okay, I feel that I'm currently getting very frustrated and it doesn't make me feel good. I'm going to make sure that I feel better now. Then you do a simple breathing technique. There's many simple breathing techniques, for example, box breathing or 478 breathing that are well known. I like to use what's called the one breath break. It's a little breathing hack that I developed. You simply take a big nasal inhale. You hold it for just a few seconds. Three, two, one. You let go in relaxation. And at the end where your breath naturally stops, you wait. This is kind of the landing platform where you can really come into a silence and ask, okay, what do I really want to do now? How do I really want to show up? Then when the breath wants to come back into your body, you inhale and you go back to normal breathing and you quickly check, hey, has anything changed? Okay, let's quickly do that again. Join if you like, breathe all the way in. Hold, three, two, one, let go. And at the end of the exhale, where it naturally stops, you wait, and when the breath wants to come back into your body, hmm, simply continue with your normal breathing. Now, this is one of the fastest ways to put the brakes on your nervous system, to downregulate yourself, to relax yourself. It's working on me right now, I'm noticing this is really good. And if you can do that in a moment that it's difficult, as soon as you find yourself wanting to say the thing that you don't really want to say to your kids, but your mother used to say it and you find yourself repeating it when you're frustrated, right? Or if you want to just kind of like bang a kitchen cabinet and run away screaming, or uh, if your child has like these little manipulative ways that are kind of the same as yours, right? These, these kinds of moments where you're like, oh, what do I do? Fully inhale, hold for a second. Stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system. Long exhale. At the end, landing platform, silence, and go, okay, how do I want to show up? And this landing platform, this moment of holding your breath, is a great moment to really ask yourself that question. What am I role modeling right now? Because for your child, of course, they want you to also be in the state that they're in. They want to co-regulate with you. So if they're in a heavy emotional state, of course they want you to be in that state with them, right? And then if you start to calm yourself, they're like, hey, hold on a second, we were fighting, right? We had an agreement here, we were screaming at each other, or we were doing this thing that we always get into. But then you go, first of all, narrate, because the narration is a way to break the pattern, is a way to stop saying, hey, you need to change this, or this needs to be different. No, you're suddenly just saying, I'm important. I am now going to relax myself, and you're welcome to join. You relax yourself, you use the breath, exhale, ask yourself, okay. And then you look at them and you go, okay, I feel a little bit better now. Let's continue the conversation. So now you have given an example of acknowledging your true in the moment feelings, not masking it, not pushing it away, making a conscious choice to do something different, and three, using a tangible, practical, real life tool that they could copy and use in their life easily to regulate yourself and invite them to regulate with you. Now, of course, there's many different breathing techniques that you could use, but a lot of them require you to maybe sit down or lay down, have some time to yourself, have some silence. And this one breath break breathing technique is so simple because you can almost do it in secret even, right? I, I know some CEOs who use it in the middle of a boardroom when they get stressed and they kind of do a mini version of it where they sneak in a breath through their nose, hold, and then again. Okay, so 
This is a breathing technique you can use. You can use one of my other breathing techniques on this channel. The most important thing is that you acknowledge that your state is the most important thing, the way you feel inside your body, truly. That is the most important thing. That is what your child feels. And if you can show an example of how to change your inner state, then your child will learn that ultimate skill that is so needed in this modern world. Because if you think about it, this becomes more and more important, right? Because children in school, they learn to sit down and shut up. They learn to suppress their natural ability to feel their body. And when we were growing up, or when you were growing up, chances are uh, that nobody ever asked you, hey, listen to your body. Your body knows, your body has the answers. So in order for children to learn this vital skill, especially in the world that we live in now, and we don't even know what world they're going to grow up in, it's so important with all these external stimuli and this fast pace and this 24 hour economy and everything always going on for them to tune in with their own body and go, hey, how do I feel? And it only takes these three simple steps to tune in with your body and give them the example. And lastly, I'd love to say that it doesn't have to be perfect. In general, with parenting, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Please remember that you don't need to be a perfect parent. You don't need to be a perfect human. Our children deserve real examples of real humans going through the human struggle, but inviting these children along, being truthful, being honest. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to get it all right. You just have to be out there doing the damn thing and <laughs> showing an example of how to be a human. And I believe that an example of how to be a human comes with feeling your body, feeling your senses, and communicating clearly, relating to our children. And that's the ultimate skill that they're going to need in whatever crazy future is coming, I believe. All right. So, let me know if this was useful to you. Drop it in the comments. Give me a like. Uh, follow this channel and I'll see you in the next video.